Today's lesson is entitled Continuity. Many theorems in calculus require that a function be continuous on an interval. So in order for us to use those theorems, we need to understand what do they mean by continuity. Oftentimes, what we end up talking about is where is a function discontinuous? Because there's usually infinitely, infinitely many places where it's continuous. So oftentimes we talk about where is a function discontinuous. And this is one instance where you wouldn't want your track to be discontinuous in this roller coaster, as these people look like they will plummet to their death. Although they may luck out and land in the nearby lake. So what is the definition of continuity? Let's jump right down to 1, 2, and 3. A function is continuous if it's defined. Now we're talking about a, a specific point. You can be continuous at a point. It sounds strange because in geometry we learn that there is no width or there is no length to a point. But we still can be continuous at a point. And we are continuous at a point if it's defined. Obviously, you have to have a, it has to be filled in at that point. The limit must exist from both sides of the function, so the limits must match the same y value. And number three becomes important. Not only must the limit exist from both sides, not only must the function be defined, but they must equal each other for the, entire f for the function to form a smooth path all the way through. Here's some types of discontinuity. So where is a function not continuous? Well, all you're really looking for is breaks or gaps in the function, if you can see the graph. A general rule you can follow is, if you're looking at the graph, if you can trace the entire function without lifting your pencil, then it must be continuous everywhere. If you have to lift your pencil to get to another part of the graph, then it must be discontinuous. For example, this first one, if I was tracing the function, tracing the function, this is a hole. I cannot go through it. The function does not go through it. I have to lift my pencil and put it on the other side and then continue tracing. So this function is discontinuous at this point. We'll let all of these points in question have an x value of c. So that's what this c is referring to. So this breaks rule number one. This function is not defined at point C. But it doesn't break rule two because this function, the limit does exist, right? If you trace both sides of this function to this point, the limits converge to the same y value. So it breaks rule one. This function here does not break rule one. It is defined at this point C, we call it because it's filled in right here. But the limit from both sides of C does not exist. Coming from the left, coming from the right, converge to different points. This function here, uh, it doesn't break rule one because the function is defined by the closed circle. But the limit does not exist. Now remember, if a limit goes, to, even if these both go to positive infinity, sometimes we say the limit as we approach C here would be positive infinity. But since positive infinity is not a set number, we also say the limit does not exist. So this breaks rule number two. And this fourth option here, this fourth graph, is interesting because it doesn't break rule one. This function is defined. There's the filled in circle at this x value of c. The limit does exist as we approach both sides of this hole. Even though it's not defined there at that point, still both sides approach the same y value. It's requirement three is the one that it breaks. The limit would approach this y value, if I would imagine a y-axis and this is the y-value here but the function is defined at a different y-value so the function is not defined at the same place where the limit exists so that would break rule number three we are going to apply the word removable to a discontinuity if 
it is discontinuous because of just one point being removed. So here's an example of a removable discontinuity. Just by taking out this one point makes the function discontinuous. But this is no, a non-removable because it's, it wasn't just one point being taken away. There is a large gap here. So one point filled in will not make it continuous. And this is a removable. If you just filled in this point here, you would make it continuous again. And so one point made it discontinuous. We call that a removable discontinuity. Pete, pay attention. Yes, I can see you from where I am. Let's go, pay attention. Okay, so the definition of continuity on a closed interval. All this is saying is, this is, this is technical jargon here. We can say a function is continuous, including the endpoints, as long as the endpoints are defined, and as long as the limit goes directly to that defined endpoint. See, you can say a function is continuous just on an open interval, and the endpoints don't matter. We don't care what happens at the endpoints as long as in between every value is filled in. But we can also say it's continuous on a closed interval if there are no breaks, if the function is defined at the endpoints and the limit and it goes right to the same value. Special rule to, to, uh, that you guys should follow. Polynomials are continuous everywhere. Polynomials are continuous everywhere. So when you see a polynomial and you are asked to tell whether it's continuous, or where it's continuous, it's going to be everywhere. The question is, what is a polynomial? Well, you better figure that out. You better look it up or something. Here's an example, though, for you. Say you're given this function, and the question is, discuss the continuity of this function. Well, discontinuities are holes, gaps. Asymptotes certainly would be a, a gap or a hole, right? So it's going right back to domain again, it seems like, where if you look in at this uh, function, the denominator, where the denominator equals zero, obviously you're not defined there. It's not part of the domain. It's going to have an asymptote or a hole. So to find where this function is discontinuous, we're going to set the denominator equal to zero. We're going to get that this function is discontinuous at plus and minus two. And these are going to be asymptotes. And they're non-removable. You can't just fill in one point on, over here on the graph and make this function smooth and continuous. Uh, and generally, non-removable uh, are going to be asymptotes. When you see a situation like this where the denominator equals zero at a few places, generally it's going to be non-removable. There is an exception to that, though. Let's take a look at the next one. If you were told to discuss the continuity of this function, well, we already did the work for the denominator. It's plus and minus two. But are they both asymptotes? Are they both non-removable? That's not true. Do you notice how you could factor the denominator and one of the terms cancel out with the numerator? Absolutely. So really, this function is equal to, is equivalent to this function, 1 over x minus 2, right? 1 over x minus 2. And it only shows that where x equals positive 2 is an asymptote. Take a look over here, which is uh, non-removable. So what's going on with the negative 2? Because clearly negative 2 makes this function undefined. Well, this is why domain is so important. You can't just, re you can't just factor and cancel and then use this function completely in place of the given function because you're missing out on the x plus 2, which made negative 2 a removable discontinuity. And you can see that there is a little hole here. Okay, it's not in the form of an asymptote. The calculators do not draw a little open circle there, but you, it, at least when you zoom in, you might see a hole like you do here. So it is undefined at negative 2 and positive 2. It, these are discontinuities. Positive 2 would be a non-removable because it's an asymptote. Negative 2 would be a removable. And yes, that's generally true. When you can cancel out one of the discontinuities, 
that usually becomes a removable discontinuity. I hope to see you guys soon. Thanks for watching.